for your second bassoon lesson. In this lesson we're going to be covering again the position of the bassoon, a little bit of posture. We're going to look at the position of the right hand and introduce a few fingerings for the right hand. We're going to talk about how the, the angle, the vocal, and the reed should enter into the mouth and a breathing technique uh, for the mouth. And then conclude again with just talking about how to care for your bassoon when you put it away in the case. Uh, if, if you don't remember how to put the bassoon together and things, be sure to look at the uh, first video. Uh, so to start this, I have uh, brought my bassoon here this, this uh, particular lesson, and I have a different sort of seat strap in that I have a ring that goes around the boot joint. You might see some white material here. I sort of put some pasted some white felt on that, glued some white felt years ago when it's worn off, I'm due to put that on again. But that cushions the ring so it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, scrape against the cap that is on the boot joint. Once again, we need to uh, position the, the bassoon underneath uh, you and have the support here. And I wanted to talk about another way to support the bassoon as well. You might have noticed, if you've seen some of my other videos, that I use a, uh, a neck strap or a harness. And on my bassoon, I also have an extension. Uh, this one is custom made, but there's some other extensions that are made for the bassoon, which hook onto the, uh, the bassoon. It attaches on the bassoon, and I use the neck strap then to additionally support my bassoon. It takes all the weight off of my left hand and uh, also frees up my right hand. Uh, there are several other things you can use uh, for the neck strap. There's this little leather leash-like thing that wraps around the tender joint and the long joint that uh, some of my students have used and, and the, the neck strap then attaches there. Most of the so bassoon vocals are created in such a way as to play the bassoon with the neck strap so that the vocal would enter straight into the mouth. However, since most of us play in a seated position nowadays, I think it's helpful to have a vocal with a little bit different bend. And bending and adjusting your vocal is something you should only have a repairman done. These are very expensive. But you can see here in this particular vocal, my vocal is bent up a little bit more. This is helpful then for me with uh, putting the vocal and having the bassoon reed come straight into the mouth. And that's the issue, is we're looking for the most comfortable position for, for you as a performer and get seated, sitting up straight in the seat, and then the vocal come straight into the mouth. Now, let's take a look now at um, the right hand and its position on the bassoon. Come up to the camera again. I use a hand rest or a crutch because I have a little bit longer fingers. If you choose not to use a crutch, the important thing is not to lean against this key and these other fingers so you're only moving from this particular joint. We want to instead have free movement from the knuckles here and we want to avoid then just collapsing our fingers and moving more in this fashion. I created another video that talks about this called fingering technique where you can see uh, the reason for that. Uh, so People with larger hands and, and bigger hands such as mine might find it very helpful to have the bassoon crutch. Most bassoonists play with their crutch like this. I find it more comfortable like that and it's just simply a personal choice. Now the fingerings for the second lesson, we're going to learn play B natural, 
B2, A natural, which is A2, and then G, putting down this fingering. And this will help you further in your lesson materials. Now, I have to tell you now about something that is more radical. Uh, I'm in the minority of bassoonists that breathe in this particular way. I breathe by dropping the lower jaw, the mandible, instead of raising the head. 95% of the bassoonists breathe like this. I breathe like this. I find that dropping the jaw allows for a quicker breath. Uh, I don't need to move my entire head, the jaw being just a smaller muscle. When we talk, we don't move our head up and down either, and yet many people, when they breathe on the bassoon, they anchor the lower, the lower uh, lip, breathing from above. Now, if you play an instrument like an oboe or something like that, your, bassoon, your, your instrument's not fixed, so the instrument itself can move and adjust, but our instrument, the bassoon, is fixed. So I advocate for that. Uh, obviously, I allow my students to make their own choice, but I think it provides for superior, quicker breath, and I think superior technique on the bassoon. Now, we're, we're talking about breathing now, and in a moment, you're going to see a few diagrams about diaphragmatic breathing. That's using the diaphragm to breathe in and using other set of muscles to breathe out. You do not breathe out with the diaphragm. You only breathe in with the diaphragm and the surrounding muscles. <laughs> ¶¶